Well, hello and welcome to the Matchroom Bubble here in Wembley. We're at the Wembley Hilton, where the Matchroom residency is well and truly underway. It finally is fight week for David Avenisian and Josh Kelly, and I'm relieved to say that they both had their COVID tests yesterday. They were both given the all clear this morning. It's the fight we're most looking forward to, and we're going to keep them wrapped up in cotton wool. December 2018 feels like a lifetime ago, but finally, after numerous cancellations, we're here. We're at the media workouts tonight. I'm going to just step out of shot straight away because we'll get to our first fighter who's under uh, already started, which Florian Marku takes on Ryland Chow. And this is bad blood. Uh, the two don't particularly like each other. There's been a bit of back and forth um, on social media. Florian obviously coming off of that draw against Jamie Stewart, which was on the undercard of Anthony Joshua against Kubrat Pulev. First thing to notice, there is a change of personnel. So you can see that Clifton Mitchell former heavyweight, uh, he's trained some good fighters, including Dave Ryan. He is now the main man in the corner. He replaces Don Charles. So after this round, we might get a quick word with Clifton and just find out how that link up came to be. Um, so it is a clash of unbeatens. Ryland Charlton, seven fights, six wins, and one draw in there. Florian Marku, not too different. Eight fights, seven wins with one draw. He's got five wins inside the distance. One thing he's been saying all week is, forget what happened against Jamie Stewart. The people know that I won, even if the, uh, my record doesn't mirror that. Obviously, I think it was Marcus McDonald gave the fight a draw. Uh, whilst it was a competitive fight down the stretch, I think the majority of people would agree that Florian probably deserved to get the nod. But that's got nothing to do with um, Jamie Stewart. He came and he came to win, and it turned out to be a very watchable fight. Florian says, don't judge me on that performance. I didn't perform my best, but even still, I believe I did enough to get the win. Obviously, he had Jamie Stewart down in the fight. That was his first time over eight rounds as well. This one's over 10. Ryland Charlton is obviously coming off of that career best win against Joe Laws, where he said, look, I told everybody that I was going to come and do that. You just still chose to, to get sucked into the Joe Laws uh, hype. And I suppose to a degree, we did. Um, Florin Marku, obviously part of uh, Sam Jones's ever... Um, growing stable of fighters. He's coming in with Johnny Fisher this week, so he won't be here tonight. But I think what uh, we are expecting is this to spark. You know, during fight week, once they get face to face, I don't think there's going to be any punches pulled. Ryland Chance is a very laid back character, uh, but I'm sure that once he goes nose to nose with Florian Marku tomorrow, things might change. I think Matchroom, I don't want to give too much away, but are planning on filming a sort of face off show tomorrow. Um, so we're very much looking forward to that one. We'll tease a little bit of uh, that out on social media. So just to, um, in case you think you've missed anything, Florian Marku was actually doing his full training session and we just agreed that we would come in for the last 15 minutes of it. So I don't think he's doing one round of pads and that's him done. He's uh, winding down now. Clifton, would you join us live on our stream here on Sky Sports? Um, first big question is, the change in the corner. You're obviously the main man now taking over from Don Charles. How did that link up come to be? Well, to be fair, uh, it was strictly by coincidence, like something you want to call it.
welcome back to the matchroom bubble. Apologies, we suffered some uh, And I land, I land one, he will be the last one that he see. It's interesting. You said this to us before. You say people say they're going to meet me in the center of the ring. And then when the first bell rings, they go on the back foot and I'm hunting them down. What do you think? Do you think Ryland Charlton's going to meet you in the center of the ring? I don't know. Let's see. I'm prepared for everything he brings. But to show my, my technique and my boxing uh, uh, skills, he must stay in the ring. He must stay to, to throw also, you know, only not to run. Ryland, he have a good record, and the UK fans are expecting him to give me problems. I will show them at Saturday that he will not cause me no, any, no problems at all. Just because of the fact you're coming off of a draw, yes, a very contentious one where many people thought you won the fight against Jamie Stewart, but do you feel that you have a point to prove? Do you want to prove a point to everybody that may, may not, might now have some doubts about Florian Markey? Yes, of course, of course, of course, because uh, in, at November when I uh, knock out the, my opponent, everyone was talking, wow, Florian is the, the star, he hit so hard, so explosive. After the draw in, the, in December, they changed their mind, you know, but it was not my, my fault. Of course, it was my worst this, uh, performance, but Saturday is, is only three days away, two days away, and I can't wait to show what, what I can do, you know, and Rylan is a fighter that... Uh, he will come to fight, you know. I will not. I don't think I will chase him and run to him. Yeah, I think that's the nature of sport. Actually, one day you are the pigeon, and one day you're the statue. I don't think it's just you. Just finally, what is your prediction? You know, everyone's going to be watching this media stream, and they know that you like to give, not not perhaps, um, you know, outlandish predictions, but you don't sort of shy away. What is your prediction for Saturday? Ryland says that uh, he will whip the floor with with me. I don't know. I don't have hair like him, you know, to whip the floor. He has a lot of hair and he will see what, uh, what will happen on Saturday. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for joining us on the live stream. Uh, we are, I think, almost ready for our next fighter to come on through, which I'm hoping is going to be David Avanesian, and he is going to be doing a, a brief workout with Carl Greaves. Uh, so I look apprehensive, but everybody's giving me a thumbs up. Here they come, the, uh, the Russian-Armenian Newark team, the United Nations of Boxing. Guys, feel free to, to crack straight on. We're, uh, we're live on our social media channels, but um, the stage is yours. David Avenison has been all smiles this week in the bubble so far. Um, he said there was a slight language barrier when they came to let him out of his room with his COVID test. No one actually told him that the COVID test was negative. They just switched his band on his wrist and he was none the wiser. But Carl Greaves, his trainer, uh, was absolutely over the moon. Um, to deliver him the news. David, obviously uh, Armenian Russian descent and English isn't his first language, but he spent the whole morning giving back to back feature length interviews in English and we uh, absolutely applaud him for that. Um, he's made a real effort. Carl Greaves told us the story that they, um, pre COVID, when they first linked up, uh, David would go and see an English teacher uh, once, a, once a week in a hotel. Um, money well spent, you would think. Uh, well, David's just going through a little bit. I'll come to you, Carl. Um, how are you finding this bubble? I mean, you, you've been all smiles so far. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. What a setup. You know what I mean? You couldn't get any better. It's like being on holiday, isn't it? You know what I mean? You're in the. Uh, Boxing Butlins. Yeah, it's, it is. It's just like it. It's fantastic. Great, great setup. Getting treated very well and um, can't fault it. Yeah, really good. It's interesting, though, because it's not for everybody. Uh, Dominic Ingle was saying earlier, like, Fighters are creatures of habit and, um, you know, it's difficult being a fighter away from your family, making weight, doing all the things behind closed doors that people don't see. Um, like Josh Warrington, for example, hoovering his room, you know, it was a bit tongue in cheek, but it's what he does at home in the bubble. Things are different. How, are you, how will David be in the bubble? Um, I mean, it's, it must be some jump from, from Russia to Newark with you, but um, I don't, it doesn't strike me as the sort of person that's going to be faced by that sort of thing. 
Nothing phases David, nothing whatsoever. He's the most strong-minded person I've ever met. Honestly, nothing bothers him, nothing phases him. And um, he'll just be taking all this all in his stride. He's relaxing now, he's chilled. He's the most happiest I've ever seen him, to be honest. He's in a great, great set physical mind and his mindset's been great for a long time and this camp's been perfect and really pleased with him. Am I holding you back? Are you supposed to be in there training? Sorry, I'm uh, chatting away. So let's just have a look at this fight on paper. David, Aveni uh, David Avenesian, 32 years old, uh, from Russia, Armenian descent, 30 fights, 26 wins, and 14 of those wins have come inside the distance. Um, there's not much else to say. David Avenesian's been there, he's seen it, he's done it. He's beat the likes of Shane Mosley, uh, winning a version of the WBA uh, title, and that was back in 2016. Kermin Laharaga out in uh, Bilbao, they say that that was a totally unique experience where um, Team Avenesian turned up and the crowd weren't even segregated from the fighters just by a tiny le little piece of string uh, in a sort of a bear pit atmosphere. Uh, Lacaraga was viewed by many as a monster puncher and pretty much an avoided man. David Avenesian obviously didn't read those notes, went to Bilbao to stop the man in his home country and uh, whilst Carl told me that they were asked to stay in the ring for their own safety afterwards. Uh, Kermin Lacaraga has uh, become a close friend of David Avenesian's. They went back uh, and did it a second time. It just shows the, the level that Avenesian's been boxing at uh, for a long time now. What will he face in Josh Kelly? Well, the 26-year-old uh, is 11 fights in, 10 wins, six of those coming inside the distance with the one draw. That one draw was obviously on the undercard. Uh, of Anthony Joshua Andy Ruiz out in Madison Square Garden against Ray Robinson, who, viewed by many, is a very, very decent test at that level. So I don't think there's any shame in the draw. Team Kelly obviously felt hard done by, um, as you would in those sort of situations. Um, what about this fight? How did we get here? Well, 2018 December feels like a long, long time ago. And I'm saying that quite loudly because obviously it feels a long time for us. It must feel like an absolute lifetime. I uh, a go for David Avenesian. The fight has got as far as the morning of the fight. I think by that point we all expect that things would um, be taken care of, all the boxes would be ticked. Not on this occasion. Josh Kelly was taken ill uh, overnight, didn't feel right on the morning of the fight and as is their choice, him and Adam Booth decided that they would save themselves for another day, that the risk simply wasn't worth it. When we quizzed Josh Kelly earlier we sort of said what are the differences between the Josh Kelly then and the Josh Kelly now? And he said that Josh Kelly now may well have lost that fight because he's a completely different animal now. Clifton Mitchell is still here. Clifton, I'm just going to, if you don't mind, just ask you to join our live stream. You'll, you'll cut off mid-technical problems. Obviously, yeah. Florian Marku... Um, your training now you see he's one of the pound for pound biggest punchers you've had on the pads by, that, by, is, that no, is some endorsement um, no is, he is the biggest puncher on the pads by far by far and with either hand he, he can punch just as hard with either hand it's very i was very very surprised how hard he actually you know you're surprised that you hey this little man can generate so much power single single punch if if he if he lands it's good night I don't know if Ryan Cholton lines is going to be a good night because he's a big, he's a tough kid. And taking nothing away from Ryan Cholton, he's he's one of the kids from small show shows come up. And like I said, this is his world title, and he's coming here. He's coming to bring it. I know he's we know he's coming to bring it, but he's not training with, with anybody else. I'm not mentioning anyone else's name. He's training with me now, so I've got a different attitude to fighting to, to what he really had. So you see, hopefully we'll see a little bit different, but these fighters get in there we can say what we want <laughs> when it as soon as it catches fire it's going to be an absolute barnstorm you know i really want to pick your brains on what might happen this week so we know you obviously former pro from the ingle gym but we also you know sa uk you're the, the top man there yeah really nice dynamic this week that you're here with a fighter yeah but you're the boss yeah so what happens if tensions start to boil over and teams get embroiled are you going to have to tell your own workers to leave you alone or are you not the boss? Are you here 
be in a non-working capacity. Well, I mean, I've seen, you know, not that I'm not saying that you yeah. find yourself trouble, but if yeah. there's trouble to be found on stage, I've seen you try to be the peacemaker, but also... I, listen, listen, I'm not here to um, cause, cause myself any problems, because that's all I'm doing, aren't I? Causing myself yeah. problems. I'm not going to look I'm not gonna look that good as a, as, a, as, a, as a manager director of a security company and then start scrapping on stage. No. And to be fair... I, ju I just think, you know, once upon a time, Adam Smith was my line manager, and, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't have wanted to have got in a, a yeah. situation where I'd have to go against my line manager. You're, you could find yourself going up against your own security team. Uh, nah, uh, nah. I think I'm too old to do that. Right? <laughs> no, I don't. And I've got, it. and I've got, and I've got, and I've got Andy Brown over there looking at me, going. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I was lucky enough. I asked him before we came on air what might happen, and he said that you were going to be on your best behaviour. So. I, I, I would be. Maybe if I was on another show, I, I might change my attitude a little bit. But to be fair, like I said, you've got to be professionals in there. At the end of the day, it's not me who's doing the fighting, so I'm very, very nice and calm. Remember, these are only little ten stone kids. No, I, no, I, I, no. I, can, I can just pick these up no, and scare out the way. Your, those yeah. are your words, not mine. Yeah, yeah. Those are your words, not mine. I jest, obviously, not yeah. that we're expecting any trouble here. I just, no, uh, no, no, it's no, quite, no. it's quite a nice dynamic. Can yeah. I just ask you about David Evanesian and Josh Kelly and what you have, think is going to happen in this uh, main event. I think, I think if, Josh, if Josh Kelly can stay away yeah, for 12 rounds, he's got a chance. Yeah? But I think he's all to do with the second half of the fight. I might be wrong. Listen, he's a tough, tough kid, Evanesian, yeah? Tough, strong, and he's, he's, he's got that... That fighters worry about him, no, taking nothing away from Josh Kelly, but he's, he's stepping up a level. Mm. Right, this kid. They, they, team have an said we're prepared to really fire to get there. Yes, yeah. Listen, uh, Carl Greaves is a very good friend of mine, even though, he's, even though he is a Forest fan. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm a Derby man, he's a Forest fan, so we get on with it. But I don't want to cause it. There's no football rivalries here. I don't want to cause with that any red, trouble. With red dogs, innit? That's what you call them. So. We're talking, Carl, we're talking football, which I, I, I didn't bring us on. Forest and Derby, I didn't bring us on to this, so I just I, I want to say that. But um, like I said, yeah, if he, as long as he sticks to his game plan and he can get and he can um, get pull it off his game plan off, he's the winner. But like I said, it's going to be a battle of um, tactics. Who can he get to him, and and can he keep him off? If he can keep him off, we don't know the power of real power of Josh Kelly. But if we can really dig and um, stand him up and make him respect him, then it's Josh Kelly. But if he can't, it's him all day. Brilliant. Thank you for joining yeah. us. Let's, uh, let's join this. I'm just going to put my microphone in so you can hear these, the, uh, the power on these punches. The other one in there, the chess, thank you. Carl, you've got five more minutes. What do you want to do? Do yeah. you, do you, do a little chat you, you make yeah. an end of chat Okay, so those of you that are just joining us, David Avanesian just finished his media workout here. He's just giving you a little bit of the raw sound on the pads there. Uh, Carl Greaves, obviously, lead trainer been doing a lot of the talking because it is understandable. David's first language isn't English, but let's see how we get on here. Carl just said after he's finished uh, a little workout out. I'll see if I can ask him just a couple of questions.
Brilliant work. That was uh, very sharp work. David, would you just would you be comfortable just doing one question? We're live. Uh, I just wonder how you're feeling now. Fight week is here. It's been a long time since December 2018. Now fight week is here. How do you feel? I'm feeling really, really well. It's really good. And now, little time before fight. I know it's after the fight. I'm happy. I hope again everything good. It's after the I have fight. Can you just tell us how you think this fight goes? What happens when the first bell rings? What? What happens this fight? Oh. What happens? I'm happy. It's for fight. Is need win me? Is my work? This is my work. Saturday I show my work. Brilliant. That's a great effort. Thank you very much for you. Uh, your, your, your English is miles better than my Russian, so I think you know we're, we're all doing right. Carl, just a very quick one. Uh, loads of comments on the stream there, looking so sharp on the pads. Um, I just wonder if you can tell us what you think happens when that first bell rings. People forget how fast David is. You know what I mean? They all think he's Josh with his skills, with the flamboyancy, with the movement, with the speed. But let me tell you, mate, this lad can fight. He can fight, he can box, he can do it all. And uh, I think you're in for a surprise on Saturday night. You know what I mean? You're in for a surprise. It's interesting you say that. That's not, maybe not a surprise in terms of the result because you guys are very, very confident. Are you hinting at the fact that we've, we've pigeonholed this as a pressure fighter, aggressive fighter against a slick tactician? Do you think we could have got that wrong, that actually it might come down to a bit more of a boxing match? You've seen for yourself how fast he is. His speed is remarkable. His speed is so is remarkable. He's so fast. It's hard to deal with on the pads, is that quick, you know what I mean? So um, I think you're in for a surprise, you know what I mean? We've got a few things in our locker. Um, I've said how I think it's going to go, but you never know. The boy's got a plan B. OK, well, uh, your phone's going in your pocket. There's probably people texting you saying you're live on Sky. Yeah, I know, I'm on it. Um, so that sort of brings us to where we are now. We'll let David uh, get out of the ring. We're all sort of looking down the corridor here because we're sort of flying blind as it is, we're hoping that Ryland Charlton is going to join us and get straight involved in tonight's media workout. I can see him, yeah, he's just on his way through now. So Ryland Charlton takes on Florian Marku. Happy to say, uh, when I say happy, relieved that Florian and Clifton Mitchell have vacated the area just because we don't want any uh, anything over, uh, sort of spilling over before we start. So Ryland Charlton coming off that. I'm going to say career best win. Those were his words earlier. Obviously, he hasn't said that tonight. But career best win against Joe Laws. And as we said before, from Norwich, he said, I want to take the big fights back. Maybe a fight at Carrow Road one day. Seven fights, six wins, three inside the distance, and just the one draw. Made his debut back in 2018. And... Uh, Dan Naylor, former pro, is part of the team. Dan, are you happy to talk to us live on the stream? Yeah, fine. Uh, can you just tell us a bit about Ryan and Charlton, what he's like as a character? From our dealings with him, doesn't say too much. He always got a smile on his face, but uh, fair to say, he said, you know, I don't do the calling out, I don't do the trash talking, I just let my fist do the talking. So can you do a bit of talking for us? What's he like? As a team, all professional, his trainer there. He's, he wants to fight. Once he's in that ring, he's aiming to cause damage, but out of it... He's just chilled, he's relaxed, he knows what he's come here to do and that's what he's going to do Saturday night. Two very uh, different characters, you know, I'm not exaggerating there, Florian Mark who doesn't mind what he says and he speaks his mind, uh, Ryan Charlton the opposite. Um, is there any danger that Florian could get under uh, Ryan's skin at all? It just won't happen. <laughs> Honestly, it's not just me saying I'm going to that. remind you of this after the press of time if it all goes yeah, wrong. No, nah, it won't get under his skin. He takes it all in his stride. Saturday night, that's, that's when it's going to happen. And that's when Florian will find out what's really going to happen. The week and the lead up to it is nothing. We'll remain professional until the night and go to work. Uh, is it fair to say that uh, Ryland's win over Joe Laws came as no surprise to, to the team? But Ooh. perhaps it shocked... Um, us and perhaps we were a little bit guilty of getting involved with the social media hype around Joe Laws, the comedy character um, you know, we, we spent a lot of time filming him because he's great on camera and maybe we disrespectfully blindsided Rylan and what actually happened in the ring came as no real surprise to you guys Yeah, I think Charles said it earlier, we've been preparing for that for years, everything is done with Frank uh, and as soon as the fight was made, we knew what we was coming to super confident and everything that come with Joe Laws, I actually think he was a little bit nervous that week, personally. And Charlton, again, like he has this week, took it in his stride, enjoyed every second of it, and done the business fight night. I think one of the big advantages for fighters that have 
experienced the bubble, like you know what you're doing now, you know what to expect, the boredom, uh, the monotony, the annoying TV interviews that we never leave you alone, uh, passing time in your room for long periods on your own. How much of an advantage is that, having done it um, back in Peterborough? Some people, I think it's something some fighters take to, some don't. Personally, I think the big ticket sellers, Josh Warrington, Joe Laws, Mark, I think it's harder for them. Chill guy like Charlton, time on his own, no bother. This week won't be no bother to him, he enjoys the bubble life. Uh, yeah, it's good, but some fighters I do think it affects. Can you tell us a little bit about, um, have, have, you, have you ever sparred him? Uh, there's a question for you. Charlton? Yeah. Yeah, a couple of rounds. Okay, okay. I mean, and sparring is usually off limits, but can you tell us a little bit about what it's like, what he does well, what's difficult, um, you know, facing him, what, what, what is particularly difficult? Um, what about uh, game plan? Look, I don't, it's a bit unfair of me to ask these sort of questions, but can you tell us anything about your approach without giving the whole game plan away? Yeah, I'm not a trainer. The trainer's in there, and he's worked with Charlton since his amateur days. Great guy, Frank Simpson is, and they know what they're doing. Uh, obviously, I'm part of the team, the manager, but they know what they're doing, and they'll get the business done on Saturday, but he won't be going on the back foot, so Florian doesn't have to worry <laughs> okay. about that. That's one little hint. Well, and you just mentioned your uh, journey there. Obviously, you walked away from boxing. Were you determined to stay in it? And did you always think that this would be a path for you, that you would manage fighters? Yeah, it's funny. You just obviously had Carl and uh, David Abiesa, and he used to be my old manager. And I got treated really well by Carl when I was in the pro game, but turned pro too late, couldn't sell a ticket, etc., etc. But I knew as soon as I finished, I wanted to get into that role. Carl would look after me, and I wanted to do the same for other fighters. And do you think that having been a pro yourself... Um, helps you in that regard that you know you know you, you knew what worked for you and you knew what you wanted to hear and does that sort of stand you in good stead from a fighter to a fighter point of view yeah it's, it's good you've got a bit of background knowledge with a game good contacts obviously he gets the best sparring which i set up for him and he thrives off that he's learned a lot of that i know inside the game how it works it's good to know i can pass on that knowledge and i do feel it gives him a little bonus there yeah What's the plan here? Beat Florian Marker and then will you be banging down the door of Eddie Hearn's office saying, look, that's two of your uh, so-called prospects that we've beaten now. Um, what, what, what can we do here? He, he signed with Eddie, as is Florian, but we know it's, it's Mark and Charlton. We're the B-side again. Little underdogs with the bookies, but we're super confident at the win. And when we do, yeah, we want to sit down with Eddie and uh, have a little chat and then plan his career in the welterweight division. Do you think that um, you can... Or that's not that you can. Do you think that you will win this fight by knockout or do you think that you win this on points? What do you think? Charlton said how I'll get a win, I'll get a win. But personally, me, I'll give a little bit more away. I think he's going to knock Florian out mid-rounds. It'll break him down. As soon as he feels that power, as you've seen on the pads there, it, he's not going to want to stand there for long. Did you have any sympathy with Florian? A strange question, but did you have any f sympathy with Florian um, after his draw with Jamie Stewart, did you think he won that fight or did you think a draw was fair? Uh, I think he won the fight. It was close. I thought Jamie done really well. Every, everyone says, oh, bad decision, but he gave, Jamie, Jamie gave a great effort. He had like four days' notice. Uh, we've only watched, well, I say we, I've only watched that fight a couple of times, so I want to watch the best Florian Markey. Don't think that was the best Florian Markey, but he should have just nicked that decision, yeah. Do you mind if I ask you about the main event? Neither main event fighters in here, so you can give a prediction without having to worry. It's a great fight. I think a lot of people keep saying the same. Can Kelly do it? I actually think, I think he's too big for a welterweight, Kelly. I think it's going to hurt him to get down to that weight. And I've seen David in action a few times. I just think later on he's going to break him down. I think a late stoppage. But it's a great fight. Uh, I think it's a great card. Obviously, Charl and Marku just before and then that. You can't ask for more. Yeah, very well said. Let's just uh, make our way over. Frank, do you mind if I just ask you a very quick couple of questions? Uh, Dan Naylor there, very diplomatic, didn't want to give too much away, but he did sort of hint that uh, your boxing skills uh, as a team yeah. are perhaps underrated. We're making a lot about the power, but if it comes to a boxing match that you think that um, you can outbox Florian Marku? Yeah, I'm quite confident in that because 
it's the old adage. I've seen him do it in the gym. Now it's just taking a transformation and a step across to fight night. You can't spar Joe Cordino, Martin Ward, Ricky Burns, Ted Cheeseman, David Evgeshian if you can't box. It's, it's just as simple as that in my eyes. Obviously, we know his strengths and we know he's not a back foot. I ain't going to turn him into Sugar Ray Leonard. But, <laughs> but believe me, when the time comes, the kid can navigate a round and can navigate a fight. Can you just give us a bit of an insight into what you're expecting from Florian Marku? On Sky, we've only had the one fight, which was Jamie Stewart, um, as I've already said. Uh, Florian didn't feel that it was his best performance and was sort of judging him on that. Dan Naylor just said there, we're not looking at that fight particularly, we're looking at the best Florian Marku. But what are you expecting from him when the first bell rings? Um, I'm expecting him to come out to be quite aggressive, but I think in the back of your mind, his, back of his mind, he knows it's a 10-round fight. Both of them just can't stand toe-to-toe and knock lumps out of each other for 10 rounds. If it goes past three or four, then you're going to have to see a bit of boxing. Um, I think he'll start fast till he takes a right-hander. Then I think he will go on the back foot and box. That's how I see it. But we're prepared for every eventuality. So. And the way my brain works, all I heard was stand toe-to-toe and knock <laughs> lumps out of each other. Uh, just before you finish, Ryland, um, thank you for joining us. Uh, first things first. Whacking those pads, and we, we, we found this in Peterborough, and we thought that maybe you were just wearing the big gloves and making a lot of noise. There is natural power. You are heavy-handed. Um, is there any insight into what we might expect when the first bell rings? Are you looking to, to do damage here and win this fight inside the distance? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm in there to do my job. Um, I'm just going to do what I do best, and that's get in there, hold the centre of the ring, and, and yeah, then let the pine-sized powerhouse do his work. <laughs> I sort of quizzed you on this earlier. He... He's good at the one-liners, uh, and he, I, I, he is trying to get under your skin, but your team have already told me, and I've sort of relayed these to you, and yeah. you're unruffleable. Uh, yeah, I don't is, is any of this bothering you? Not at all, no. I don't, the, the only thing that bothers me is, is uh, the training and focus on winning, simple as that. He can talk what he wants, he can stare me out what he wants, and I just find it quite entertaining, quite funny. Like, he can do his stuff, and I'll just do my job, simple as that. I wouldn't want to play poker with you because you just got a smile on your face all the time, so I don't know if you're bluffing or not, but he challenged you to meet him in the centre of the ring. He says people say they're going to do it and then they go on the back foot. I just wonder if you are going to oblige him. If that first bell rings, and he, are you sort of willing to stand with him and beat him at his own game, or is that silly tactics? No, I'm just going to do what I do, simple as that. Um, if that's me in the middle, I feel sorry for him. He don't want to come meet me in the middle because <laughs> it's going to end badly for him. So, yeah. I laugh now because that interview we did in Peterborough, that was the first time I met you, and you were just like, nobody cares about me. Nobody's talking about me. All of the pressure is on the A side. All of the pressure is on Joe Laws. It turned out to be that way. In the post-fight interview, very, very relaxed. You were like, look, you know, I didn't really get out of second gear. Same again this time, almost. Everybody's looking at Florian Marku. He's the one making the big predictions. You know, there is a little bit of hype behind him. Does this suit you? Does it suit you that everybody else is talking about Marku and actually just keep snapping unbeaten records because, you know, it's don't mistake my quietness for a weakness kind of thing. Yeah, I just don't see the point in all, all of the talk, because um, especially Mark Hussain is going to be world champion, he's going to beat up all these world awaiters like Conor Ben and all this. I feel like you set yourself up to fail, especially when you can't even beat Jamie Stewart. So I just feel like, yeah, he can mouth off all he wants, and it, I'm just easy with just being me and doing me. And even when I am, once I do beat Mark Hussain Saturday, I will then be the favourite. And it's still not going to phase me. I'm just going to do me the whole time. Simple as that. Brilliant. Well, we're enjoying you being you. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. OK, well, that neatly brings us to the last part of this uh, media workout. Josh Kelly, Team Josh Kelly, is in the building. Uh, some familiar faces that you can see here. Lads, you can crack on. You, you can crack straight on. I know you uh, Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> Adam Booth, don't worry. We've given you permission. The green light. Um, so let's just set this up. You can see some familiar faces there. Uh, Adam Booth, lead trainer. Um, Richard Towers, Michael Conlon. Hazifa uh, Rick Bell. Everybody's here. <laughs> and here is PBK. The flying pride of Sunderland. Josh! Pretty boy! I mean, yeah, I mean, that's left people speechless, but that is not a bad, that's, that, that's not a bad intro. I, I give you tremendous, tremendous respect for that. Very, very good. 
So Josh Kelly is actually doing a full training session at seven o'clock. So the agreement is he's going to uh, come in and do his light warm up. We'll grab a quick word with him, and then we will be escorted out of this gymnasium, and the doors will be shut, and they won't be giving too much away. Um, very interesting. If you've been across our social media channels today, you will have seen a terrific clip of a very, very youthful Josh Kelly uh, from when he won his ABA title. And you just look at him now, and we showed him the clip, and hopefully we'll be putting that out uh, at a later date uh, this week. And he just said, look at me there and look at me now. I'm a completely different person. And I think there will be some... Uh, sort of comparisons made to the Josh Kelly of 2018, to the Josh Kelly of now, physically and mentally. So PBK, 26 years old from Sunderland, we've already heard him introduced, trained by Adam Booth. Uh, almost perfect record, 10 wins, just the one draw. As I said earlier, that draw coming against Ray Robinson at Madison Square Garden, a fight that they still thought that they had won. So what is the timeline of this fight? Well, originally it was supposed to happen in December 2018 in Sheffield on the Brook Zarafa card for Kelly's WBA international title. Both fighters weighed in, and uh, obviously that was when we saw them go nose to nose for the very first time. There were some rumors, uh, I don't know if I should really sort of say that, but rumors that Josh uh, had taken some weight off he didn't look particularly good on the scales. I think that is fair comment. That's certainly what Carl Greaves said from his recollection. Um, when we caught up with Josh, he had said earlier in the week he wasn't feeling particularly well. They thought they could get through fight week. And uh, they made the decision the night before that he would have a, a, night, a good night's sleep to see how he felt in the morning. He woke up with Adam Booth. He wasn't right. And Adam Booth made a very difficult decision to pull out. Richard Towers, who's part of that team, joins me now. Richard. That was a no-win situation for Josh Kelly because if you go ahead, and I, I reference the Jordan Gill situation here, if you go ahead and you're not well and you lose the fight, yeah. no one's going to have any sympathy for you. Yeah. You pull out and you get called a coward. It is a very, very difficult situation. Presumably, you side with Adam. A fighter's health has to come first. Yeah, definitely. That's the thing with, uh, with fighting, especially when you're in the mainstream, you know, public public eye you've got to you've got to at least give yourself the best chance and only the team can know what level you're at at that particular time and nobody knows better than people like the likes of Adam Booth he's, he's on the ball not only with you know timing but with the intricates the smaller details and Josh thought he were ready then if you look at him now in comparison to then it's clear to see even from a layman's point of view you know, I'm not suggesting you're a lame, no, I'm no, the same. No. I mean, it, it, funny you say, I was just describing on the stream that we put out a clip earlier of a very, very youthful Josh when he won his ABA title. They look like two completely different people. But actually, had I said December 2018, you'd say they look completely different as well. He looks completely, older, yeah. uh, you know, in a good way, he looks more mature, yeah. he looks more confident in himself. Um, I just wonder if you could sum up the difference between the Josh Kelly from 2018 and the Josh Kelly now from what you've seen behind closed doors. Well, I think, I think you asked him to describe where, where he's at in comparison to where he was in one word. And straight away when you asked that question, the word mature came to mind. And, you know, even though Josh felt like he was 100% ready then, now <laughs> if he percentages, he's 200 percent ready now and it's clear to see it's it's obvious but i think with regards to uh, the the mental side of things i think josh has exactly what i said he's matured a lot not only not only in his thinking but in his in his ring ring uh, experience as well as that you know you brought a big thing into the bubble what's the thinking behind that yes michael conlon is training as well so he's doing a bit in here yeah. but is it is it to Josh with the right people and positive vibes. I mean, these bubbles are unique. You know, you can end yeah. up sort of, I don't know, talking to the walls in here yeah. because it is, it is very lonely. Um, yeah, just what is the thinking behind getting sort of the, the big team in here? It's, it's, it's all natural. There's nothing forced. There's nothing changed from what he's used to doing. Me and Josh speak on regular, a regular basis. Josh and Michael, Josh and H, Josh and Charlie, Josh and Adam. We're all in close contact, close communication on, on a regular basis. So nothing's changed. This is just how we, how we like it. And um, 
if Josh is firing when we're all around in preparation, the idea is he's going to be firing on the night when it's time to, to show up under those lights. I don't want you to sort of hint at game plans or tactics or anything like that, but what are you expecting from David Avenison? Have you seen much of him personally? Yeah, yeah, I've, uh, I've seen quite a bit of David Avenison, and uh, I think with, with David, you, you, you can't take your eye off the ball. <coughs> I think he, he definitely comes to fight. He's your typical Russian. You know, they go off uh, toughness, they go off, you know, ring generalship. I think he's, he's got all, all the above, it ticks all those boxes, but one thing that I don't think he can anticipate is what Josh is going to bring to the table, because I don't think there's anybody like him. So only time will tell, but nobody's looking past Avanesian. Everybody's got full respect for Avanesian, but it's time to war. It's time to go to war, in or out of the ring. We're, we're ready. I don't think um, there can be any questions that Josh is a massive world away. Um, it's a fine line between being massive at the weight and yeah. strong yeah. and being just a bit too big for the weight. From what we can see there, he looks very full in the face, very happy. Uh, he certainly hasn't been grouchy, which is always a number yeah. one sign of someone yeah. struggling at the weight. Um, so much focus will be on the scales because of what happened after the weigh-in first time round. From where you've been in, in this situation and being around him, are you confident that uh, he is as strong as he can be at this weight? Yeah, definitely. You know, the thing is, if, if you look at all the formidable champions through time. Prince Nazim, not, not, not in any way comparing anybody, but just mentioning champions that we know as most common. Prince Nazim, you know, he'd get in there with, with big kids, kids what were supposed to out bully him, kids what were supposed to outpower him, but his technique would suggest the complete different. And he'd get in there and not only deal with these bigger opponents, he'd get in there and obliterate them. And with regards to mentality, Josh has got, he ticks that box, he ticks the physical box, he ticks the technique box. I just can't see how Avanesian, somebody like Avanesian, no disrespect to the fella, I don't see how he can last the duration of five rounds, never mind 12 rounds. Th their argument is that they feel that Josh can be broken down. They feel that regardless of what's coming back, he's prepared to walk through fire. Carl Grease called him a brick wall. He yeah. said it'll just bounce off yeah, him. Well, Josh, when I put that to Josh, he yeah, laughed. Yeah. He was like, sounds great to me. Yeah, you see the, the response from me. <laughs> I, I, I laugh because I understand that they don't understand. They don't, they don't get, they don't get it. And I, and I don't mean that with any re regards to disrespect towards those fellas. I just mean most people don't understand, especially when you've got somebody stood in front of you, what? you can't prepare for. I don't understand how you can prepare for a guy like this. I don't understand how you can mentally, as well as physically, prepare for a guy like this. You know, not to suggest that they've not done everything within their power to prepare for Josh. I'm sure they have, but we're gonna see on the night, you're gonna see exactly what I'm saying, and you're gonna, you're gonna mark my words in future, hopefully, that this kid, this kid has got something what not many other people have got, especially, I'm talking about in boxing, not only this weight. Perfect. Well, look, I don't want to be rude, no, but uh, no, Adam Booth, Adam Booth has given me the stare from across the ring, and uh, I'm not going to say it was the cutthroat gesture, but he said that's enough. Josh, thank you for letting us join the last uh, one of the last training sessions that you'll do now before fight night. Um, you're going to do a full session after this one. You've just done a little bit of a shake out there. How are you feeling? Uh, the countdown is well and truly on three days. Hmm, feeling good, man. Feeling on point. Feeling ready to go. And uh, it feels nice in here, bro. Energy feels good. There's a good atmosphere, some good people in the room. <laughs> we're ready to meet, we're ready to go. God's blessed us, I'm ready to rock and roll, brother. How are you finding the bubble? Because it isn't for everyone, it's long hours of repetitive mm. requests. Um, there's not a hell of a lot to do, can't go and get any fresh air. It's not for everyone, how are you doing? It's lockdown, eh? <laughs> I've been doing this for the last how long, in camp, you know what I mean? In and out of the gym, back to the flat, nothing to do, but sitting read or watch telly or do what you got to do, do you know what I mean? So, it's, uh, it's, it's similar, it's, it's exactly what we need, it's focus for fight night, that's it, for, total focus. Yeah, you did a serious stint up in the Athletes Village up in Sheffield, which I'm sure was very similar to this. What about uh, David Avenisian, you know, the uniqueness of this bubble is, chances are you are going to bump into him, share a lift with him, maybe not share dinner with him, but um, are you comfortable being around him for the remaining days? Oh, of course, more than comfortable. In my element here, I've got good guys around me and uh, I'm 
protect my energy. It's good. It's very good. A lot of the questions about this are the differences between 2018 and now. How do you feel that you have matured? How different do you feel when you look at the Josh Kelly? Someone wants to show you a picture of you on the scales then, yeah. and how you are now. Would you say they're two completely different people? Wow, you just seen that. I mean, I just took a photo the other day in the gym and put it up, and the difference then compared to when I was on the scales last time, you can just see. Um, you can see I did the, I did everything right, and you can see that there's no there's no stone being unturned. So. Um, God willing, me and David go back to our family safe and healthy after this fight, but I think I'll be the one walking away with that European title. Well, I know I'll be the one walking away with that European title. Fighters are great sort of poker players, though. If you were bluffing, I wouldn't be able to tell. You are a massive welterweight. There, are, there can't be any denying that. Do you make welterweight healthy and still leave enough in the tank that if this has to be a hard, tough 12-rounder that you're confident that you can do that at a pace that he might set, which might be a fast one? Yeah, 100%. percent train for it. Been down to weight long enough now. Um, it's been the best I've ever did the way. So come Saturday, I just I, I just got to enjoy it. Let everything flow. Don't think, just do. When you were in camp and we, we did a Zoom call with you, you very, very uh, forthright. I win this fight inside the distance. Mm -hmm. I shock people and I knock him out. Do you still stand by that now? 100%, 100%. If it goes points, then it goes points. But I'm winning either way. And I think it's big stoppage is coming. Yup, 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 yup. Listen, I, like I said, I got a stare from Adam Booth, which was very much a stay, welcome, you know, uh, enjoy yourself in here. Not. So we're going to get out of here. Uh, enjoy the rest of your training session. Thank you very much for joining us on the stream tonight. I understand there have been one or two technical problems. I wish I could show you really where we are in a concrete room. The signal isn't that great. It happens. But make sure you join us tomorrow for the press conference. Uh, send all your questions in. We like to answer them across all of our social media channels, Sky Sports Boxing YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, where you've joined us. Keep watching us on Sky Sports News. Enjoy the rest of your evening.